What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, you're with Chris and today I'll be giving my spoiler free review of Ordinary Grace by William Kent Kruger published in 2013. Now I first became aware of this book only recently in fact by looking at booktube and seeing how favourably the book has been mentioned but it's more so piqued my curiosity since the group of prominent booktubers known as the Kaluminati made up of John from Talking Story, Brian from Belltube, Mike from over at Mike's Book Reviews and Dr. Philip Chase. They will be reading this as part of their book club meet every quarter and they are reading it this month and it piqued my curiosity so much so that I just had to jump on that bandwagon. All right, so let's start how I always like to with what the book is about taken from the cover. New Bremen, Minnesota, 1961. The twins were playing their debut season. Ice cold root beers were selling out at the soda counter from Holderson's drugstore, and hot stuff comic books were a mainstay on every barbershop magazine rack. It was a time of innocence and hope for a country with a new young president, but for 13 year old Frank Drum, it was a grim summer in which death visited frequently and assumed many forms, accident, nature, suicide, murder. Frank begins the season preoccupied with the concerns of any teenage boy, but when tragedy unexpectedly strikes his family, which includes his Methodist minister father, his passionate artistic mother, Juilliard bound older sister and wise beyond his years kid brother, he finds himself thrust into an adult world full of secrets, lies, adultery and betrayal, suddenly called upon to demonstrate a maturity and gumption beyond his years. Okay, so from the very first page, the tone is set. We know that the story will be a retro perspective account taken from Frank's childhood, the expectations are laid down and established and the foreshadowing in particular is excellent and I've got an example here of exactly how foreshadowing should be done because it's brilliant and I'll just read this little uh, passage for you. I stood up to return to my bedroom and looked one last time where the lightning stabbed the earth that rimmed and isolated our valley. There'd been two deaths already that summer and although I didn't have a clue there were three more yet to come and the next would be the most painful to bear. Whose death do you think? Well, you're gonna to have to just read the book and find out, but it is a perfect example of how foreshadowing is meant to work. It's meant to fuel your curiosity to find out what the hell happened and whose death this was that hit Frank so hard. And it forces you to turn the pages, which is what foreshadowing is all about, to keep the reader guessing and uh, uh, craving uh, answers throughout the book. It's told in the first person viewpoint, of course. Uh, it's always an intimate reading experience when you're reading from this viewpoint because you're always in the character's head and you are sharing the experience from the main character's point of view where everything is coming at you. So you're not getting into anyone else's head, you're receiving all the external stimuli. So there's more surprises, uh, I think, with this viewpoint. And uh, with this kind of story, there is no other way to do it but from the first person point of view. Kruger captures small town life in America in the 1960s superbly, and you can't help but feel a little bit wistful about your own childhood, the 80s in my case, and you find yourself craving just a small taste of that simple life again to get away temporarily from the pressures that come with being an adult in a busy world, to re-experience the world without modern technology like streaming services and smartphones. And don't even get me started on the brilliant coming of age elements in this book. This is how coming of age should be written, uh, particularly with what Frank and his younger brother Jake go through and what they're exposed to and what they have to deal with, which is absolutely heartbreaking. The writing style from Kruger was really spellbinding and engaging. And before I started reading this book, I was in the middle of another one and I decided to download a sample uh, of Ordinary Grace. And uh, just by having a sneaky peek at the first couple of pages, I was drawn in immediately and I had to make myself stop. That's the effect that this writing had on me. I really enjoyed the complex relationships between the characters here, uh, which that it was very addictive to read about because of the interactions that uh, ensue in the book. And there are a lot of dead ends that Kruger will take you down whilst you're trying to figure out the mystery of who murdered who. Um, it's all very, um, there are vague clues sprinkled throughout, but you are kept guessing right until the end. And I think with endings, it's a very common mistake from writers to rush the endings. In uh, Kruger's case, I think he sticks the landing for the ending very, very well. It's a very, very good epilogue where things are tied up really nicely. Um, everything is concluded in a fashion that is very, very satisfying, where you leave the characters uh, to their current life 
Uh, the epilogue takes place in the present day uh, from Frank's point of view. So uh, I think how the past has affected the present is very well, we're very well captured here and uh, a very satisfying ending. Okay, so for some final thoughts here, I drew some parallels from Stephen King's The Body here, along with some elements from it, more specifically, the altercations between the Losers Club and Henry Bowers, the bully from the book. It gripped me from start to finish. The words tended to get blurry between chapters 22 and 24 because of how heartbreaking it was about a character that I liked immensely from the very beginning and uh, it it really hurt me in the feels it really did and uh, it was uh, very sad to read about so I missed it up a little bit and cried a little bit I don't mind admitting because these characters have a way of grabbing you and uh, affecting you on a deep emotional level there was one shocking moment in the book involving Frank Doyle and Gus at the river's edge during an activity that was undertaken and there was an incident involving a, um, a certain species of wildlife there I had to stop for a moment because it was a really um, shocking uh, chapter to read about and uh, whoever has read the book knows exactly what I'm talking about here. It was very, very confronting, but uh, no spoilers here. This is a book that's going to resonate with me for a long time and even though it's early in the month, it's going to be a contender for my book of the month. And that, that is a really big call. Now, there are a couple of books I haven't read yet, Of Blood and Fire by uh, Ryan Carhill and Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. So they may rise up to take the spot, but I'm not sure at the moment. But uh, this book is going to win an award in my Bookish Brilliance Awards this year, I am sure. If you're looking to lose yourself in a compelling story filled with mystery and heartbreak, the themes surrounding the impact of religion and the power of forgiveness amidst terrible circumstances, circumstances with larger than life characters who affect you on a deep level this is the book for you and I guarantee you will love it and it's no surprise that uh, William Kent Kruger won the uh, Edgar Award for this book so uh, I gave the book five stars that's how good it was I had a great time with it I went on an emotional roller coaster and I think you will too I think the guys over at the uh, Columinati uh, booktube group will have enjoyed the book I have actually uh, message back and forth with John about the book. We didn't do a buddy read on it, but I did invite his thoughts because he was reading it at the same time. And uh, yeah, I think uh, everyone in the group is going to enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to the live stream when that happens. But thank you very much for watching, guys. That is it for my spoiler-free review of Ordinary Grace, a fantastic book. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, offer up any feedback below, and I will promise to deliver the best content I can. Help me get to 1,000 subscribers. I am almost at 600, but uh, until the next video, guys, happy reading.